Okay, good morning. Uh, see, we are uh, now in the last part of our vehicle dynamics course. We are going to uh, specifically uh, study and learn about tires. Uh, those are called pneumatic tires, right? Uh, of course, we have talked on tires and peripheral uh, way, not in detail, uh, but we are going to uh, look at now the tire in particular and its uh, mechanics for vehicle dynamics uh, application. So in vehicle dynamics course, uh, apart from uh, understanding some fundamentals of mechanical vibration, you have systematically uh, have learned and organized your learning process in three aspects of dynamics of vehicle. Those are ride dynamics, that is called vertical dynamics, and then lateral dynamics and longitudinal dynamics. In ride dynamics, we were more interested in looking at the vibration and noise perception by the driver and occupant and uh, what are the standards that are uh, uh, enforcing on the ride quality and the different tests those are conducted at the system level as a whole vehicle level in laboratory or on road and particularly ISO 2631 ISO standards that uh, recommend the target interior uh, vibration levels uh, imposed on various surfaces and operating condition of your vehicle <clears throat> and this all to study we looked at vehicle as a mathematical model particularly we studied uh, um, quarter car model where we are able to focus on wheel hop frequency and bounce frequency of sprung mass <clears throat> and uh, the another model we looked at is uh, so pitch and bounce model again these two models were studied for deterministic signal and then we looked at uh, how can we model our road surface uh, by its power spectral density function and then uh, how can you give that as an input to study the vehicle uh, so vehicle uh, uh, ride dynamics with the help of a single degree freedom whole vehicle is considered and we have studied that so this is all something that uh, we did in uh, uh, ride dynamics uh, with an objective of to improvise the ride quality and through uh, an understanding of uh, development of mathematical models and real-time tests and so on was so what is that we did in that part of dynamics and then we entered into uh, lateral dynamics and lateral dynamics uh, very important thing is the steering control and stability of your vehicle steering control and stability of the vehicle would always provide the directional control of your vehicle and you'd be able to maneuver your vehicle at ease at low speed or moderate or high speeds on a uh, curved surface, curved roads. So that's what we have studied and uh, importantly we looked at a model called a bicycle model uh, which is a uh, very popular model though it is representing whole vehicle as one rigid body and doesn't include uh, suspension uh, effect onto your vehicle. You are able to uh, study uh, a wider spectrum of your uh, lateral dynamic aspects looking at steady state motion and steady state gains and then uh, the application of uh, state matrix in finding out uh, stability analysis. Uh, we also looked at the advantage of uh, um, raw stability criterion and so on. So we did essentially with the help of bicycle model, uh, two important objective. One is uh, direction control, another one is stability of your vehicle. Uh, and uh, we represented the bicycle model uh, governing equation in state space form and realized its advantage. Uh, uh, of um, carrying out our stability analysis and also we looked at an important uh, uh, handling uh, test those are open loop tests to characterize your vehicle behavior in lateral dynamics and those are constant radius test constant speed test and constant steer angle test so this is all something that in brief what we have learned in lateral dynamics or otherwise called handling dynamics of our course and then we have uh, got into um, longitudinal dynamics or performance of a vehicle called wherein we looked at uh, essentially what are various uh, forces that are acting on your vehicle when the vehicle is driven in straight line and uh, we looked at the free body diagram of a vehicle uh, whole vehicle and then uh, we are able to um, uh, determine what is that maximum tractive effort that can be developed at the tire road interaction uh, so that uh, you would be able to have uh, your vehicle performance in um, the way expected. So the performance when you say it is uh, how good your vehicle to accelerate or decelerate uh, or braking 
or to grade the resist uh, the slope uh, with the uh, low speeds as well as the higher speeds uh, gentle slope is all what is quantifying uh, your uh, vehicle performance and vehicle performance study in mathematically uh, to say that uh, no it is uh, 1d motion so you apply newton uh, second law and then find uh, the necessary uh, acceleration level that are required to overcome uh, the resistance acting on it so this is what uh, we were doing it in uh, longitudinal dynamics and then we had looked at a special topic uh, uh, on uh, <coughs> transmission system power plant and transmission system this is what is an important aspect because uh, the driving torque to be given on the wheels are coming from your power plant through the transmission system and uh, that value uh, uh, corresponding equivalence of tractive force and the dictated tractive force by tire road interaction by road addition coefficient out of these two values smaller of that is deciding the performance potential of your vehicle that's what was the crux that we have looked at and that's essentially made us to go in to look at uh, the characteristic of power plant we looked at petrol engine operated um, uh, vehicle its um, torque speed power characteristics uh, of course with the fuel uh, specific fuel consumption that plot though it is not uh, uh, straight away uh, uh, appearing the characteristics to the vehicular power plant uh, vehicular uh, requirement of an ideal uh, torque speed uh, power characteristics so it is uh, uh, because of its advantage of having high uh, weight to power uh, uh, power to weight ratio and uh, ease of uh, operating and uh, fuel economy and so on uh, the lighter weight all uh, contributed that uh, mm, the acceptability of your ic engine based uh, with an appropriate uh, transmission system uh, that is more viable than employing an attempting and steam engine or an uh, um, which can provide this ideal requirement so making a steam engine powered vehicle is so complex and it is uh, not viable whereas you can see that in early locomotives those application whereas an uh, advantage of this ic engines are exploited with that understanding we looked at how can you design a manual transmission system uh, so the uh, important criterion for that is what is the maximum speed that you want to get it in your vehicle and that as a basis and geometric progression weight the intermediate gears uh, and then uh, lowest gear for grading capability of vehicle deciding this this uh, principles uh, and we have designed a, a manual operated gearbox so that the engine uh, would operate in a specific uh, speed range for all gears mentioned is what uh, uh, we decide uh, design then we marched into braking uh, of your vehicle when uh, importantly the expectation of braking of your vehicle is the vehicle to uh, stop at the shortest distance possible with the stable motion that means that vehicle uh, the tire wheel should not get locked that's where we understood the advantage of uh, having uh, your uh, anti lock brake system that can help uh, uh, with an electronic feedback uh, control system to modulate the hydraulic pressure of the uh, uh, wheel cylinder so that the distribution of braking force in front and the rear can be optimum uh, which is that we looked at uh, uh, analytically as well and uh, that's what we have stopped in the last class so so far what i have just uh, uh, i have uh, told you all what we have learned so far in brief and uh, recapitulating uh, the content what we have learned so today we are going to start and maybe another three lectures we will be able to finish our course uh, looking at an important uh, uh, element in our vehicle that is tire wheel assembly because the tire wheel assembly is not there we cannot uh, have vehicle motion at all right so i'm going to share my screen and uh, go through uh, um, an introductory part today for the tire uh, uh, mechanics and then we will get into tire models and then we will see the tire properties for uh, the vehicle dynamic aspects so that is how i'm going to organize my another uh, uh, two to three lectures to complete our course so let me share my screen for today's class So uh, today's lecture is uh, lecture number 42, and today's day uh, is 06 12 2021. 
and we are going to study about uh, mechanics of pneumatic tires. So uh, you know that uh, pneumatic tires, uh, basic function of pneumatic tires is not only to support the weight of the vehicle and to ensure uh, the following, the cushion of vehicle over uh, surface irregularities, provide sufficient tractive, traction for driving or braking, um, traction for driving and braking capability and provide adequate steering control and direction stability. So this is what uh, that we have seen that can be fulfilled by a pneumatic tire. That's why they are popular and universally used for uh, vehicles on ground, <clears throat> right? So uh, these three uh, statements, uh, we are able to bring in the whole perspective of what you have so far done. So when I say cushion the vehicle over the surface irregularities, uh, talks about our ride dynamics, uh, vertical dynamics, to provide sufficient traction for driving and braking uh, is bringing in your longitudinal dynamics. Otherwise called the performance of a vehicle. And to provide adequate steering control and the direction stability talks about your lateral dynamics. So these all uh, are the basic function of a pneumatic tire. We know this pneumatic tire is of toroidal shape filled with uh, compressed air. And we are going to look at in today's class, there are some constructional details. How do we nomenclate the size of the tire uh, and then uh, what are speed and load rating? And then we look at what is tire axis system? What are the uh, forces and moments that are acting on this? Uh, uh, are generated by the tire due to its interaction with the road surface and so on, right? When you say pneumatic tires, it has got two purposes uh, the, um, based on the operating state of your uh, tire on the ground. So it can be uh, tire design uh, for the hard surface like an asphalt road for uh, passenger vehicles. Or on the other side, the tire design for an off-road vehicle where the uh, vehicle would not be on the hard surface on the deformable surfaces. But uh, our study uh, in vehicle dynamics, we have confined so far and we look at tire for uh, motion of uh, vehicle on the hard surface so, so that it can accommodate all tires on our highways, on the road surface, uh, which are uh, asphalt roads or the, um, um, or the uh, asphalt roads. So that is what uh, in background that we are aware of uh, studying. You also have an another uh, fold of uh, tire design for uh, deformable road surface because when vehicle goes with the road surface, which is not hard, which is deforming, like it has to go on a mud road or on a sandy road, you see that uh, the mechanics of uh, pneumatic tire would be altogether um, uh, highly complex. So uh, uh, with that, we are going to discuss now all on the tire on hard surfaces, right? So if you look at, uh, let's look at first this tire construction. How does it appear? So you see here, you have two pictures, uh, one for uh, the bias ply tire, another one is radial ply tire. So you can see there are two classes of tires uh, in vehicular application, bias ply tire, radial ply tire. So how are they named? They are named looking at the construction detail of your tire. So if you look at the tire wheel assembly and you section like this appearing like in this picture, it is essentially going to have an important component called the carcass. So this is called the carcass. Carcass is the one which goes from uh, one bead to the other bead like this. And it is going to have a stacking of plies. So this is one ply, second ply, third ply, fourth ply and so on. And then it is going to be covered with uh, your tread, your sidewall, uh, um, plies your tread uh, uh, buttons right so this is how it is there so if you go in detail again uh, if you look at uh, these plies uh, these plies are uh, enforced with uh, reinforcement that is high modulus uh, reinforcement so in a low modulus rubber casing is what is made it is a marvelous composite structure uh, and you see that uh, this uh, card's orientations are very important. The orientation means the direction of these cards placed. So you have here, there are four plies on this bias ply tire. <coughs> so innermost ply, then second, third, fourth. You see their directions are uh, 
stacked, uh, the price are stacked such that they are an alternative way. So that if you look at uh, this price alone, uh, they would have this criss, uh, diamond crisscross pattern. So the lines here in this view represent a card in a ply. A card can be made of uh, um, nylon, uh, polyester wire, or it can also be made of steel wires. So uh, these cards have got its orientation defined by the angle called the crown angle. So the crown angle is the card inclination to the uh, line uh, that is representing the wheel plane of your uh, tire wheel assembly. So that is circumferential uh, intersection by the wheel plane is what is this base and uh, the orientation from there is defining this. So for a bias fly tire, it is 40 degrees. On the other hand, look at this picture on the right hand side. You have uh, that angle is 20 degrees, crown angle here. And this 20 degrees uh, is not on a ply, it is on the belt. So you can see there are belts. These belts were not appearing on the bias ply tires, whereas those are there on a radial ply tire. And another important difference that you should notice here is the plies here running in bias ply tires are having this crown angle and they are. Uh, stacked in alternative way. Whereas you look at the uh, ply here, it, innermost ply of the carcass, uh, uh, where you see that uh, um, cards are 90 degrees crown angle. So they are aligning with the radial direction. That's why these are called a radial ply tire. So now you take on one hand, if I have only radial plies and no bells, what would happen is this tires would have some buckling effect along the circumferential direction and they may not be able to uh, be stable uh, during its motion. That is why you require belts also to be stacked along with this plies, but the belts are not running from bead to bead like plies. So they are only going to cover the portion in the tread. So this portion is what is called a tread. So uh, it, it is going to be only uh, wider there. Again, that uh, arrangement of belts uh, can be uh, a similar way in an alternative way, but the orientation of the cards and the belts are 20 degrees. So now let us look at the influence of this crown angle. So the more the crown angle, if it is 90 degrees with the belt, this uh, 90 degree, uh, the more the crown angle would be much better for ride comfort compared to that of uh, on the road holding handling. Whereas if you have the lesser crown angle, uh, you see that would have good road holding, but uh, you will not have good ride. To have a compromise in a radial ply tire, which are very popular, uh, though it has been first invented by Michelin in 1948, this is today is taken upper hand on all segment uh, almost uh, on a road vehicles. Of course, there are uh, vehicles which are off-road vehicle, agricultural field or some military application vehicle or two wheelers, you see this bias ply tire. Otherwise, that all tires uh, of the tubeless uh, uh, tires all are now uh, radial ply tire because uh, the belt has to, the orientation of cars in the belt would account uh, the handling capability and the orientation of uh, 90 degree crown angle uh, cards in the plies would take care of uh, the ride quality. So it is the compromise. So that is why the radial ply tire is very popular nowadays compared to the tough bias ply tires and this has got its uh, uh, employment in your vehicular uh, application. So based on this crown angle, you should be able to discuss this. So you can also look at the low transfer nature of your um, tire analogous to that of a bicycle that we have. In a bicycle, how your low transmission is taking place, it is uh, because of the tension in the spokes of your wheel rim. And the spokes will be under tension and that uh, will be hung uh, from the rim top, uh, the hub of that uh, uh, wheel is hung. And that is where the load is getting transferred. And the bottom of your rim is supported to the ground. So that is how the tension in the spokes is responsible for a bicycle to for the load transfer. In the pneumatic tires in the vehicular application, the tensions in these cars are responsible for load transfer. That's what you should understand, right? So the uh, uh, load transfer to come and to have uh, such an uh, um, uh, uh, structure 
uh, this composite uh, way of arranging is very important. It cannot be just made of rubber. When we say tire, we feel that this is made of rubber. Of course, it is made of rubber, but it is not only having rubber to provide the necessary stiffnesses are the nature and it is been in encased with the high modulus uh, wires called cords right so that's what need to be uh, kept in mind so you can see that uh, you have here uh, this is what is called the rim base and you have these two are called beads so the beads are anchoring your carcass and the splice are running from one end of the bead to the other end, uh, other side bead. And the beads are made of uh, steel wires, uh, uh, um, steel wires with the different uh, strands uh, made of steel wires, uh, and they are providing necessary seating arrangement of this carcass on the ring. So that is how you can uh, look at carcass. Carcass is what is the entire profile. Uh, the structure is what is called carcass in the tire section. And the carcass uh, consisting of a number of plies. And the plies are uh, uh, having number of cards and the uh, stacking arrangement, crown angle, all are important. Over which you have this tread uh, is um, attached. And the tread is attached to, to the side wall. So this zone is what is side wall and this is tread. And that is this attachment of these side wall to the um, uh, tread is what is called the shoulder region and so on. So this is how we should uh, understand the tire structure so i have put this pictures here and uh, if you look at the, again in detail uh, this you can see that uh, the material uh, are very very important so if you look at the material and the rubber is not of one uh, simple rubber rubber can be of synthetic rubber rubber can be of butyl uh, rubber uh, rubber is of natural rubber so natural rubber uh, would provide a good rolling resistance but uh, we know that the natural rubber compared to that of um, the uh, synthetic uh, 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 rubber compounds uh, would have lower road adhesion coefficient comparatively, but it is going to provide good uh, rolling resistance uh, uh, for the vehicle. Mm, uh, the smaller rolling resistance, good rolling resistance in the sense the rolling resistance should be smaller because it is always resisting the expected motion of your vehicle. It is uh, like a braking force. So the lower the lowering rolling resistance, it's better for um, your performance of your vehicle. And in that aspect, if you see low rolling resistance that is uh, viable by um, uh, natural rubber compared to that of synthetic rubber, but uh, synthetic rubber compounds uh, or butyl rubber compounds are used uh, because of better road holding uh, means better mu p value. So this is all something very you know uh, complex because the many parameters, uh, many compounds. Uh, it is not one or two, three. Uh, many number of hundreds of compounds of chemical rubbers are uh, there. Uh, and uh, it is how this tire is made, right? So the radial tire compounds, if you look at, you can see this plies and the cards are radially arranged, crown angle 90 degrees, and you can see here the belts are there. Uh, and uh, you can also see this belt buffer because the interaction of this uh, belt uh, here, you may have wire, steel wires, whereas here it may be nylon or uh, polyester cards. So that the interaction of this uh, to prevent you have this, uh, build buffers there and then you have this cap or the the trend otherwise it's called the base trade or cap it is correct it will have your tread pattern uh, so this is come something called lug tread pattern and uh, tracks that you could see uh, and you would see you know, generally this tread pattern would be um, uh, randomized in a passenger car tires uh, for a specific purpose what is called hydro planning we'll see that uh, in the next class also and you see there is a side wall. So the requirement of side wall is that should be capable of uh, having high fatigue and scuffing process because that uh, flexing action would be there on the side wall and, and that loading would be when it is driven will be fatigue loading. So your uh, side wall stiffness or the nature uh, should be and the compound rubber should be uh, such that it can resist uh, hold this. Uh, fatigue loading. That's why this is generally made of uh, sterile butadiene, uh, you know, synthetic rubber compound. On the other hand, if you look at tread, uh, the tread has to have a uh, requirement of uh, low uh, wear resistance 
and low rolling resistance because that is that part that is going to con contribute more rolling resistance compared to that of the other components in the tire. So if you take 95% of the uh, rolling resistance uh, that comes in your vehicle, is all because of uh, tire uh, components, uh, tire um, uh, components, and uh, out of which 75% comes from the tread, 15% uh, around 13% from sidewall, and then from shoulder region some uh, uh, three to 10%, and then uh, bead the remaining one or two percent. So the components uh, in the tire structure do contribute for a rolling resistance. If you look at that's predominant from the uh, tread, right? So these are all some of the information uh, when you are talking on tires, you should know. And uh, you could witness here various components nicely uh, seated on this bead bundle. So it's not one steel wire, it is strands, many uh, strands are coupled together, bunched together. That's why it's called bead bundle and which is uh, providing necessary seating arrangement of this all on the rim, right? So if you look at on the other hand, uh, the radial, uh, that's non-radial tire compounds, you could see here the plies uh, with the cards of uh, an opposite sense running. Uh, otherwise, the remaining uh, components are there. But if you look at here, you, you may wonder, see, this is bias tire, you say, and uh, uh, it is uh, not a radial tire. But you see belts are there. So this is bias belted tire. There can be also belts that can be on this. So you can have purely only the plies like you see in this diagram or you can also have bias tire which is uh, with the belts called the bias belted tire. So that would be between uh, bias and uh, radial tire or uh, the advantage of both you want to realize it bias belted tires are also used right <coughs> okay. So Coming on to uh, understanding the tire, once the tire is manufactured and it is fit into the vehicle or given to OE and supplied by the tire manufacturers, the tires are identified by this following information of a specific uh, vehicle. So if you look at the tire uh, by this eight uh, information that you can see on the tire side wall and the side when you look at from the side. So the size of the tire is telling you what would be the radius of your tire wheel assembly, overall radius. So you can look at that would be given by this in this case, um, uh, P215 60R15 96H. So what is that it refers to? So P refers to passenger car tire, 215 refers to um, your tire width, overall tire width, and 60 refers to aspect ratio. What do you mean by aspect ratio? You'll see that it is the ratio of uh, height of the tire to that of uh, uh, the width of the tire. And R refer here radial tire. And 15 is the rim diameter in inches. And 96, uh, this two digit number, or uh, it can also be three digit, uh, referring to load rating. So, what is the maximum load carrying capacity of your tire? And then the speed rating by alphabet. And then see, uh, you have uh, number two. So number two here is what is uh, referring to maximum allowable inflation pressure. So you can see in this tire, it is 40 PSI written. Uh, then type of uh, tire construction, number three. So that is uh, referring to um, uh, here. Um, what is the tire? It's tubeless tire uh, and so on. So this is radial tire here, right? And uh, like that, you can just look at uh, this all uh, printed on this. So the uh, manufacturer or brand name here, it's past tire. So you can also have our Indian tires, JK tires, MRF tires, all would be named like this in place of fast tire. So this is how a tire is nomenclated. So if we have this size of the tire, you would be able to arrive at what is your free rolling radius of the tire when you are looking at in our calculation, we will be able to arrive at. So how do you get it? It is radius of the rim plus the height of the tire, right? So height of the tire, how do you get? Uh, because you know what is aspect ratio. So aspect ratio is defined as uh, height to that of width of the tire. So width of the tire, you get it from the uh, normal size here, 215 mm. So you would be able to get height. And height and uh, radius of the rim in mm, if you add, you would get what is your free rolling radius of the tire. And uh, additionally, these informations would help you 
or the tire selection according to the vehicle. So the tire which is shown here is of uh, uh, sport uh, sedan class uh, US vehicle. You also have an, another uh, 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 thing is mentioned here BMW European vehicle how this tire is nomenclated. So this is all something that you should understand when you say tire information. So I would uh, suggest that if you chose to write an assignment on tires, please go and look at uh, various tire manufacturers and their tire naming. So you may take a photograph and try to explain in your assignment. And uh, like, let's look at the section of your tire wheel assembly uh, here. You see this uh, tire wheel assembly section overall width. Uh, so these all are represented with respect to the center line. Here, the rim diameter referred to the rim from base to this top, and that is uh, rigid in nature, so that won't deform unless and until there is an impact load acting on it. And you see this uh, tire uh, section height is this, so it is uh, not an inflated tire here, it's, right? So whereas here it is inflated, so you can see this is uh, height uh, section height, and this is uh, tire printed, but uh, overall width is from side wall to side wall. So the section height by side wall to side wall uh, section width is what is going to give you aspect ratio and pan width referring to beat to beat outer in a rim seating uh, and then uh, tire footprint width would be uh, the width of the tread cap right so this is how you should uh, understand so if you look at uh, you have this center line and the hip in, uh, the rim inside outside you can see inside there is a projection that's essentially to make uh, 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 assembling of your tire wheel assembly with the spindle of your vehicle uh, drive right so this is what is the tire wheel dimension and then uh, the section uh, nomenclature and then we looked at that some uh, rating, right? The speed rating and load rating. So load rating by an alphabet and speed rating by, uh, sorry, load rating by number and uh, speed rating by alphabet you have seen. So the tire, what we have uh, looked at here, 96 and H. 96 is what is your uh, load rating and H is what is your speed rating. So you can see that the tire, what we looked at, uh, if you will see here 96, so the tire can carry 716 kg load. So if it is of one tire, this much is a load carrying capacity. So four tires in a passenger car, it's almost saying. Now the weight of your sprung mass on the tire would be four times of this, around 2.8 tons. So it's a bigger sport sedan class uh, vehicle, uh, maximum load carrying capacity uh, of the uh, vehicle. So on a speed index, if you look at the hatch, so hatch is what is saying that the tire um, can be ridden for 210 kilometers per hour speed. If you go beyond the speed, uh, what would happen? There is something called standing wave permanent uh, uh, deformation and that would again going to contribute more of um, uh, rolling resistance, energy loss. When I say rolling resistance, all the basic uh, reason is the energy loss. The energy cannot be uh, like and it's not elastic in nature though the rubber we say it's elastic in nature but the compounds and the, uh, the tire would undergo the loading such that it is a hysteresis uh, loading so loading path and an unloading path is not the same and that is what we call it as a hysteresis loading uh, that's what is happening in your tire and that would be accounting more of energy dissipation and the energy dissipation is responsible for creation of this rolling resistance force we will see that what is this rolling resistance force and influencing factor in detail in a while in our upcoming slides. Look at now uh, very interesting uh, aspects. I have taken this uh, essentially these slides uh, the content from uh, JASA textbook. Uh, you have many of the question and answer type of question. Please go through that. So here you can see behavior of tires in presence of uh, lateral force. If it is a radial tire and non-radial tire, you can see the contact of uh, entire contact is ensured in radial tire, but that is not happening in the uh, non-radial tire. That is why the radial tire would provide more road holding capability compared to that of uh, non-radial tire. If it is a biased or bias belted tire, even if you look at uh, entire contact patch won't happen. So the moment your contact patch area reduces, your adhesion uh, region is uh, less and then the necessarily developed uh, lateral force is uh, lesser in this case compared to that of radial tire. That is why radial tires are good tires for 
uh, lateral force generation and holding of lateral forces. And another thing you'll see plus one concept uh, in tire design. Essentially, you can have different wheel diameters, but uh, your effective rolling radius of the tire should not change. So that is what is plus one concept. It is with reference to rim diameter. So the first one with the section shown here is 20565 R15. So R15 refer to radial uh, tire and rim size is 15 inch. And the section width uh, correspondingly for the tire is 205 mm. Aspect ratio, if you look at this height to that of width is 65%. So that is how you read this tire. So now, uh, if I have to increase the diameter of the rim by one inch, the thumb rule is uh, 20 mm width to be increased and 10% uh, uh, aspect ratio should be reduced. So that the effective radius of your tire wheel assembly uh, means the uh, free rolling radius, your uh, normal radius of the tire wheel assembly will not change. R will be constant. So this is what you should understand. So if you see that as the rim size is increasing, the aspect ratio reduces. The low aspect ratio tires are good for lateral stability. The shorter the sidewall, refer to what uh, uh, high uh, uh, width and uh, low uh, aspect ratio, and they are good for uh, lateral stability and the quicker steering response would be there. That's why you see high-end vehicle, you see that very thin tires, but it is not so, right? It is better folding. Of course, there is a compromise with the stiffer ride, but this stiffer ride can be um, accommodated by means of an uh, active um, uh, suspension system and so on, uh, the control strategies there too. Uh, account uh, your vehicular level ride uh, quality apart from uh, looking at your tire design. So the radial ply tires are uh, compromised for your ride, but that is not only responsible for ride. There is an energy bump, but the energy transfer from tire wheel assembly to the vehicle through the suspension. So you can still have a scope to work on suspension and its uh, nature. Instead of providing passive suspension, go for semi-active suspension. You would be able to get your good ride quality along with your uh, lateral stability, right? And uh, the tire components by weight percentage, if you look at, uh, this is again an interesting and uh, you know, uh, when you say you are allowed this, this, you should be able to always remember. Reinforcements, if you look at steel, nylon, uh, rayon, all are 16% uh, of contribution. Rubber is 38% and it can be of natural rubber or synthetic rubber compounds. And what are the compounds of this? It's carbon, silica, chalk, 30%. And softener, called oil or resin also is there. And vulcanization, that's called vulcanization process in tire manufacturing. Tire is called cooked, it's not manufactured, it's called cooked. All are arranged, then it will be kept in a oven and then it's cooked and then uh, it is made into vulcanization process to get its necessary uh, properties. And there are some miscellaneous components. So these are all some tire components uh, by percentage of weight. And you see uh, today we call alloy wheel uh, uh, tire wheel assembly. So it's become popular. It's all because of the advantage. This one picture immediately tells an advantage of uh, alloy uh, wheel rims. See aluminum alloy or magnesium rims, if you look at the bounce on an obstacle uh, is reduced. This is less. As well as the range of uh, uh, jump is also reduced. So that's an advantage. And additionally, it is going to be lighter weight compared to the tall steel rim. So that is why you see nowadays the vehicle is uh, getting more and more uh, with the tire wheel assembly of uh, alloy wheels. So magnesium rim is very costly, very high-end vehicles you could see. Whereas this aluminum alloy nowadays in almost uh, in domestic segment, uh, you have been uh, witnessing and uh, customers are preferring, though there is much a bit cost involved in the vehicle for this, more people do prefer. This is uh, an advantage that you have uh, the wheel bounce, wheel hop frequency, you see. So the bounce of that would be less. 
and uh, the jump uh, is reduced. That means the energy uh, carried uh, is also reduced. So that is an advantage of this. So this picture all to keep in your mind when uh, you have to um, answer sometime we are asked in the interview process. And then when you say tire, there are three important tire stiffnesses, very important. So you have tire longitudinal stiffness, vertical stiffness, otherwise called radial stiffness and lateral stiffness. So you see the uh, stiffness value more in this longitudinal stiffness. So how do you get the longitudinal stiffness? You have a tire and then load it and then you are trying to pull uh, the contact patch along the longitudinal direction. So that is what is uh, going to give you here some uh, shear deformation and based on that deformation or the deflection, uh, what is that the corresponding load that you apply would help you to estimate so this slope is what is defining your longitudinal stiffness is higher compared to that of the other two and lateral stiffness is what is uh, the smallest compared to that of these three and that would be the same way if the contact patch has been pulled of the loaded tire on the lateral direction what is the shear deformation that takes place uh, the deflection that in lateral direction takes place of the given load decides this slope and that decides the lateral stiffness and vertical stiffness is you load the tire, the deflection you measure radially, and that is going to decide. So you see, this is important for uh, your uh, right dynamics. And you looked at lateral uh, stiffness for your uh, handling. And you looked at uh, uh, this in your uh, performance requirement. Right, so if this stiffness is more, uh, then accordingly uh, you would have uh, its influence on the generation of uh, either tractive force or uh, the braking force. So that mechanism all is what in detail we are going to study in uh, um, good old uh, Julian's model till uh, uh, advanced uh, uh, magic formula models. Right. Uh, maybe in the next uh, on Wednesday class we will look at uh, tire models. And then another important tire behavior is modal and non-modal behavior and NVH point of view, right? So the low frequency excitation, the road surface gives an excitation and a broader spectrum. So if that is excited in the range of 100 to 300 hertz, you see that the tire uh, distortion would be in this fashion. Uh, that's called a modal behavior. The same if it is beyond 500 hertz, around 1000 hertz or 2000 hertz excitation comes. That's going to create non-modal behavior, local vibration on the tire road interaction. And that would die out because of uh, high damping nature of your tire material. And this is non-modal behavior. So this is uh, responsible for exterior noise emission. This is responsible for pumping energy to a vehicle interior to create interior noise. So that is how you should look at the tire. So we looked at the tire as an unsprung mass for our ride dynamics in quarter car model. That is to understand the vibrational uh, response. But if I had to study for my noise uh, radiation or noise uh, transfer inside the vehicle, I should look at my tire as a um, modal tire model or non-modal tire model study, right? And then uh, we have uh, we are already seen this tire axis system that. Uh, uh, so, uh, describing all three necessary forces and moments that are generated at the tire road interaction. Uh, you know that um, they are attractive force in this direction, uh, positive x direction and positive y direction. It is uh, positive lateral force and uh, positive z direction is downward uh, is uh, normal force. And this uh, resultant force, uh, what is there acting at the tire road interaction, their components. And uh, this axis system is called an SAE coordinate system, SAE. Society of Automotive Engineers recommended uh, this axis. And that is again right hand uh, uh, Cartesian coordinate axis. Uh, you have to look at uh, your axis in this way. So this is your longitudinal direction, lateral direction and positive you know, as a direction. And in this uh, you should look at uh, and these three axes also uh, responsible for three moment uh, uh, components that are generated in the tire road interaction. One is overturning moment Mx uh, along x axis that is acting. And uh, important moment, what is called the rolling resistant moment uh, about y axis. And you see this uh, direction of moment is uh, against the direction of wheel torque and the direction of motion. 
so that is why um, you see this is uh, manifested by um, rolling resistance force we will see that in a while and then a self aligning torque self aligning torque is very important for your yaw motion or you see from the top uh, what is this uh, plane rotation that comes and two important angle here alpha that is slip angle uh, here it's measured positive slip angle so that is an angle included by the direction of wheel travel to that of uh, uh, longitudinal axis or this longitudinal axis is wheel plane intersection with the ground plane is what is longitudinal axis and then uh, this wheel plane inclination to xz plane uh, is what is defining a positive camber angle so the slip angle and camber angle both are going to contribute for your lateral force that's what already that we have seen so this is all something to describe you require because ultimately these forces and moments are an additional forces or important forces other than of course the aerodynamic force and, and uh, um, uh, inertial forces that are acting on your vehicle you see these are the necessary forces that are generated uh, and uh, pneumatic tires are capable of uh, generating these forces and moments uh, to have your vehicle to translate or vehicle to realize its motion right uh, and that to describe you require to understand this um, tire axis system the center of this the origin of this contact is at the center of the contact patch if you look at um, there would be an offset that can be arised uh, for the normal load it is not exactly the resultant of normal pressure not necessarily at the center of the contact patch of the geometric center of the contact patch so it would be uh, with an offset longitudinal offset and the longitudinal offset is decided is because of the rolling resistance force we have to understand similarly you can also have this lateral force may not come through this uh, center of contact it would be with the, uh, an offset lateral offset called pneumatic trail that we have seen so these are all something that uh, is because of an unsymmetric uh, normal pressure distribution at the contact patch if you look at uh, the contact patch would be rectangular in shape the first uh, leading half would have more normal pressure compared to that of the trailing half so the distribution of normal pressure resultant would be uh, skewed and uh, would be on the leading part of uh, your uh, contact patch and there, there's an offset a longitudinal offset and in a free rolling tire this longitudinal offset uh, would create a, a, a moment which is unbalanced to balance that uh, there is a moment that is random and that's called the rolling resistant moment and that rolling resistant moment is what is responsible rolling resistant force in the uh, x direction right yeah and then uh, this diagram again to look at those planes uh, wheel plane and so on the same thing to de describe we have understood this and uh, of course this vehicle access system once again i have brought in here though we have seen in the previous class to see the effects of these forces and moments that are acting on the tire wheel assembly on a vehicle level and those effects are um, the motions the translation along this three line axis system and the rotation about this three axis system so the forward velocity is uh, describing the vehicle speed and the lateral velocity is important for your directional control uh, and uh, and your uh, yaw velocity or the vertical velocity here is what is bounds of your vehicle for a ride aspects that we have seen so this should be minimum this should be minimum so that you'll have low slip angle uh, and uh, the other uh, angular motions is roll motion. So the roll motions uh, are under control because of your roll stiffness of your vehicle. And pitch motion is the um, spot or dive <coughs> of your vehicle about y axis. And yaw velocity, yaw motion is very important when you have to maneuver your vehicle. So this is very prim primary. Other two should be uh, reduced uh, in its effect. Right, and the same we can witness with another diagram of the another popular textbook. Uh, and uh, this is all essentially to look at the motion of a vehicle on the ground, and there we define an important coordinate system called the earth fixed coordinate system. What is called the inertial frame of reference or Newtonian frame of reference on a fixed ground, so that you would be looking at the track where the vehicle goes, and then you would define this other important angle, heading angle. Heading angle is your uh, uh, x direction uh, angle to that of x on this or you can say that is the tangent and drawn to the path vehicle path is what is um, x axis and the angle with the vertical reference is what is heading angle 
the course angle uh, here is uh, positive uh, this angle is because this projection of instantaneous velocity so you have here your lateral velocity goes like that uh, so sorry uh, uh, your vehicle velocity goes in this direction so this angle here is what is course angle the difference between uh, heading angle course angle is what is defining side slip angle beta that's negative angle in this in this picture and of course we have a steer angle by the steering system on the wheels uh, responsible for to go on this vehicular path so this is all something uh, three important coordinates so we have to have a uh, vehicle uh, with the tire axis system vehicle body coordinate system again what body coordinate system we looked at is also again uh, uh, sai coordinate system here and um, uh, earth fixed coordinate system additionally we have learned an another important coordinate system body fixed coordinate system and that would be a coordinate system fixed at the cg location of the body you could see that small this y this x and z goes down and if this frame is in a curved path so accelerated so we could see that the position of the vehicle may not be cannot be explained with this body fixed coordinate system the position to say i require an earth fixed coordinate system whereas uh, the velocity and acceleration can be best described with the body coordinate system. So this was the question asked in your quiz yesterday that you had given on the Saturday, right? So uh, with this, I would stop today's class. Uh, we will start with the next class, uh, understanding importantly what is called a rolling resistance, and then we go ahead. And the rolling resistance uh, depends upon these are the parameters in detail. So I stop at this point. In the next class on Wednesday, we will progress in our mechanics, pneumatic uh, me mechanics of pneumatic tires, understanding this rolling resistance. Uh, what are these factors influencing? And then we look at uh, uh, briefly the tire models and the basic theory that go into tire models that is responsible for developing uh, your uh, tractive effort or braking uh, effort, uh, the phenomenon of slip or skid and your lateral force uh, generation, uh, how the tire is uh, modeled, uh, that is a string model uh, has been used uh, mathematically to represent the tire for lateral force development. And then uh, we will uh, look at uh, properties of tire for ride. And in between, we'll also look at what is hydro planning and so on. There are many aspects to discuss. And maybe I will take uh, another three lectures for to complete this um, portion uh, to um, say that uh, we have learned vehicle dynamics uh, of ground vehicles to um, as per our syllabus content right so good day to all of you i'll stop at this point of time if you have any doubts you can otherwise um, we'll meet again on this wednesday so i will stop sharing stop recording